John, you have the, the floor. Thank you, Jean-Claude. I'm uh, predictably in, in the position that pretty much everything has been said, but not everyone has said it. So I will uh, try to differentiate a little bit, but I think the main points have already been mentioned. Let me add one on uh, European banking. Of course, one of the side effects of the regulation has been effectively a seeding of the international capital market business, the investment banking business, to non-Europeans, essentially American banks. And uh, I, I don't think that was intentional, but it's certainly been one effect. Uh, I would uh, like to hope that Akinori is uh, correct in his optimism. Uh, as uh, the new managing director of the IMF pointed out in her inaugural speech last week, uh, as, we, as the IMF gets ready to issue uh, its forecasts in the World Economic Outlook, uh, they find that 90% of world GDP is in economies that are slowing. Now, this, uh, I'm, we haven't seen the data. Uh, Japan has essentially been at full employment. The U.S. has been the only large economy growing above trend if we use the, the metric of falling unemployment rates and the U.S. unemployment rate, as you probably saw, has now fallen to 50-year uh, lows, even though participation rates aren't as high as they were back then. And uh, what this suggests is that you're slowing growth in the EU, which is <clears throat> starting point below trend at this, at this time, and the major emerging economies, all the major emerging economies, are, going to, are suffering at this time from a slowdown in growth. So it's worth asking, what is the cause? Is there a common thread? And there are a couple. The principal one is weakness in fixed investment in capital goods equipment and the software. And that runs through virtually all economies, and especially advanced economies. And it's worth asking, why is that occurring in a time in which monetary policy is aggressive, to, is accommodative to aggressively accommodative? And interest rates are at historic, generally at historic lows. Uh, it suggests some kind of deep uncertainty. And the fact that, as uh, Akinori pointed out, a substantial amount of uh, the uh, uh, most important sovereign bond markets are now trading at negative yields is something I think that none of us ever anticipated could occur on a sustained basis. And I don't think we all understand it completely. How can this be possible? How can this be sustained? And what is, what is the message? Certainly low inflation is, uh, is one of it. But given the outlook for growth, given or the consensus outlook for growth, given the likelihood, if anything, that the fundamentals point to a weakening of energy prices and commodity prices, it's uh, somewhat hard to see of why at least inflation expectations are going to change substantially in the near term, and they could even uh, work, work, potentially work lower. So this is likely, to, there's every reason to think this very unanticipated and abnormal situation will, will continue. Let me switch then to the policy side, and or let me add, uh, we've seen a growth in concerns about things like regional inequality, regional, sorry, regional differences in growth rates within economies, within countries, adding to inequality, and inequality in perceived as an increasingly important problem for economic policy. Things, th also, awareness that things like gender concerns, gender inequality, also undermines economic growth plus concerns about climate. All these are important. I would maintain that these concerns uh, have been heightened by the sluggishness of growth. If, gro if growth was seemed more robust, these would seem less threatening. So let me just turn just briefly to, uh, to the policy uh, setting and just make the following simple points. Uh, I was happy to hear a mention of the G20. Uh, the, the initial G20 meeting in uh, November, at the leaders level, in November 2008, had four agenda items. One, restore, uh, restore global growth. Two, repair and reform the, the financial systems. Three, 
avoid new per trade protectionism, and promote new trade liberalization, and four, reform the international financial institutions. And I would say the grading, if we were teachers grading the pupil, we would say incompletes on every single one of them. And there's, so the question is, is there a possibility for policy to make, in the near term, an important improvement in expectations and performance? And I would say very difficult at this time. One, a growing perception that we've seen that uh, monetary policy accommodation seems to have run its course and increasing feeling among monetary authorities that they have been, as Jean-Claude said, the only game in town, but that game is ending. I would uh, paraphrase, uh, everyone remembers Mario Draghi's remarks in London in August 2012 when he said, we'll do whatever it takes. He was referring to saving the euro. And he went on to say, and believe me, it will be enough. But not that many people paid such close attention when he spoke again at, ja when he spoke at Jackson Hole two years later and said with regard to improving performance of the European economy, he said, we'll do whatever we can, and believe me, it won't be enough. <laughs> what he said was fiscal, fiscal, and monetary, uh, fiscal and structural policies are needed. But are, those, are those, those kinds of improvements likely? We still have the institutions, the G20, the Bretton Woods institutions, et cetera, that exist. They've been augmented by the regional finance uh, arrangements. But do we really think that the international safety net and the institutional framework that we have put in place is adequate to represent a bulwark against new dangers? And I would say incomplete as well. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. What you said is very stimulating. You're summing up of uh, the program after the crisis and the, the poor results. Uh, at least, of course, we avoided the equivalent of uh, the 30s uh, in the 20th century, and it was extremely likely. Uh, what, what we did in the time and st since then uh, corresponds to an underlying set of problems in the advanced economy in particular, which is really totally dramatic. Uh, and it's very difficult to understand the monetary policies of the central bank if we don't realize that we are in an extraordinarily demanding environment in the advanced economy. Because let's not forget, it was a crisis of the advanced economies.